Hello and welcome to the High or Lows podcast, a brand new Dungeons and Dragons fifth edition actual play podcast set in the homebrew world of Taraz. Taraz is a world plagued by decades of interplanar war as minor deities have vied to increase their power and domain. Five years ago, the minor god Protas used their power to tear a city-sized chunk off the planet in a surprise defensive, which has caused widespread effects. This new moon has become known as Terra. Astride Terra lies three mountains and the ringed walled city of Virtue, a place forged by a coalition of minor gods for the protection of their supporters. And this is where our adventure will begin. My name is Philip Munn and I'll be your game master throughout this adventure. I've been gaming into geek culture my entire life and I've been playing D&D for a while now and running games for about two years. I decided to start this podcast with some friends and we'll have to see where the adventure goes and see whether the die roll high or lows. Um, and here I will introduce you to our players, uh, Mimbo, let's tell the group about yourself. Yeah, my name is Mimbo. Um, I am a lawyer by day and a D&D enthusiast by night. Uh, I once appeared on Today Tonight in a Russian fur hat. Apparently, you can Google it. Excellent, excellent. And Laurie, introduce yourself. Uh, g'day, I'm Laurie. I've been playing D&D myself for about 20 years. I work in the IT field and I'm super into games and tabletops in general. Well, cool. And Liz? Hi, my name is Liz. I'm a teacher's aide. I've been playing D&D for the past couple of years, and when I'm not D&D, I'm heavily ingrained in the pop culture scene. Excellent. And Fletch, tell us a bit about yourself. Hi, my mates call me Fletch. I'm a project administrator uh, by day, by night. I am uh, anything I can imagine as a role-playing. I've been role-playing for 20 years. I uh, absolutely love D&D. Um, and yeah, I like to play guitar. I like to joke around with friends, and I'm really looking forward to this. Cool. And our final player is Ash. Hi, my name's Ash. I'm kind of lucky enough to live my life in the creative field. Um, I've written a book, uh, my own book, and uh, worked on a few films. So I think a d and podcast was always on the cards for me. Um, so I'm looking forward to it tonight. Sweet. And with that, let's begin our campaign. Our adventure begins with a group of prisoners being led down a corridor, ten in total, bound by manacles and chained together, wearing pristine white jumpsuits. Flanked by uniformed guards, bearing the symbol of Protas, a mountain with a beam of light hitting the peak from above, bordered by two smaller mountains. They are led by an angelic-looking humanoid, with stark white hair and glowing eyes. They address the group. This shall be your last glimpse of sunshine for some time, perhaps forever. Bask in it, and bask in his light, as it strikes the peak of vigilance in an everlasting symbol of his power. The guards lead the group outside into the bright sunlight as jeers can be heard from a large crowd that's gathered amongst the pristine buildings of this military district, located in this shallow valley. Above, and to their right, in the far distance, the celestial bridge can be seen shining its holy planar energy which fuels this place and its unnatural orbit. Jeers of shame, traitor, murderer, tiefling abomination, devil worshipper, heretic, and various other slurs can be heard as the group are led through the crowd. The first five prisoners keep their heads bowed low, avoiding the eyes of the crowd, but able to, unable to silence the taunting. A tomato is launched from somewhere in the crowd and strikes the sixth prisoner directly in the face. Laurie, would you like to describe Callum, please? Callum is a fairly average looking guy, about five foot eight, with a solid stocky build. He has a shaggy mane of brown hair with an equally shaggy beard. He seems to have a noticeable scar running over both his eyes, leaving him in a blinded state. Just before the tomato strikes him, Callum would turn and look directly at it before it smashes straight into his face. Very interesting. As the group continues forward, a large teenage boy rushes the group and pushes a teenage Asima to the ground, which elicits, che which elicits cheers from his friends. Mimbo, please introduce Chuck. Yes, uh, Chuck is um, a young male, uh, barely in his teenage years. Um, he is from House Azrael, um, which is of angelic blood, and he's currently wearing um, fine clothing, um, which is from his noble heritage. But obviously it is extremely dirty now, considering that he's spent the last couple of days not showering and 
in jail, so to speak. Very good. They continue, and two gnomes dressed in robes can be seen casting spells from the balcony of a tall tower towards the group. These spells are causing a dirty gnome to have the appearance appearance of a goblin. Fletch, it's your turn. I am a little gnome, and I am wearing a uh, a potato sack over myself uh, as clothing. I have big goggly glasses which are broken. My voice sounds a bit like this, and I'm a bit manic. I'm uh, trembling through the streets and uh, trying to avoid the spells that have been fired upon me. Um, and very confused and scared. I have wily, crazy white hair uh, and a big hooked nose with big bat-like ears. My name is Tweak. Cool. A group of well-dressed women are pointing, jesting, and laughing at the group. They are particularly particularly fixated on a towering female that dwarfs everyone else in attendance. She notices the women and recognizes them, all having been cured of maladies by her in the past. Lizzie, please describe your character. Well, my character is quite tall uh, for a fur bulk. Uh, she's got fleshy pink skin, raggedy long red hair with some like twigs and leaves and all of that in it. Um, torn clothing uh and she's trying to restrain from her um uh, manacles so she can try and um get to the women to say well i'm not as bad as you think i am it's tough Finally, tailing the group and receiving the vast brunt of animosity from the gathered crowd as humanoid, bound in additional restraints and flacked by four times the guard. Small children scream in fear as this bound individual is pelted heavily with rotten produce and other more unsavory materials. Ash, last but not least, please introduce us to Barakas. Oh, with uh, horns that trace my hairline back, I stand about six feet tall. Uh, skin reddish with a deep mahogany colored eye the other covered by an eye, pa eye pouch actually with um with a red five pointed star on it very good as the group continue continue they're led through a small gate in a heavily guarded wall that separates the majority of the crowd from within the path leads upward towards a large industrial but secure looking building set in the side of one of the smaller mountains the commander orders the group towards this building and as they move the jeers of the crowd start to die down but angry mutterings can still be heard from the compound guards as the prisoner was led inside the building one of the guards whispers loudly enjoy the dark i hope it devours you all they continue into the building and are led past several smaller rooms to a larger auditorium where a large blue-skinned humanoid sits behind a bench on a podium in the far edge of this octagonal room <laughs> The walls of this room are lined with various nobles and dignitaries in attendance for the ceremony. A banister separates them from the centre of the room, which descends to a decorative but sturdy-looking seal. Another angelic-looking figure, wearing ceremonial robe, addresses the group. The Deva of Justice will now read your convictions before the punishment is dispensed. Please remain silent until your charges are read, at which point you will be allowed to address the room briefly. Any attempt at sedition will result in your immediate silencing and a swifter path towards the undercrag. The blue-skinned humanoid, now known as the Deva of Justice, begins speaking in a strange, unearthly, yet soothing language as they speak in an apparatus. As they speak, an apparatus translates the words to common. As is the tradition of virtue, we do not execute our criminals, but follow our own path of sacred justice. Convicts are sent below the seal to cleanse the undercrag of the various infestations and monstrosities that lie below. As is customary, they are sent without weapons, lest they fall into the hands of our enemies. But, armed with a blessing of protests, and by the grace of the fallen divine entities, the seal shall now open, so the way to the darkness is clear. The diva slams a golden hammer on a gong behind them, and a beam of light streams from the hammer towards the seal in the centre of the room. The seal slowly begins to rise as a coldness spreads throughout the room. The first five prisoners have their charges read. Theft, 
heresy, theft, assault, and worshipping a false idol. First three mumble words quietly to themselves that can't be heard clearly. The fourth spits on the ground and glares at the Davis silently. The fifth pleads their innocence on deaf ears. As the Davis reaches the sixth prisoner, the following words can be read. Callum O'Sullivan, you are hereby convicted of dereliction of duty, assault of an officer, and harboring fugitives. What final words do you have to speak before your sentence is enacted? I regret nothing. Everything I did was the right thing to do. I just hope my family is looked after. Very well. Chuck Levictus Azrael, you are hereby convicted of dishonouring your house, instilling fear in the public, and murder of a respected merchant. What final words do you have to speak before your sentence is enacted? I remain... Retain my own counsel. Get on with it. Numble Twinkleton. You are hereby convicted of vagrancy, the creation and selling of unsanctioned weapons to unsanctioned people, arson, and manslaughter. What final words do you have to speak before your sentence is enacted? Are you sure there's no... Uh... Nothing I could do to not go down a hole and clear out horrible, dangerous creatures. There is not. Uh, then I have nothing to say. Hmm. Thistle of the Parowin Grove, you are hereby convicted of enacting property damage, sedition, and attempted treason against the light. What final words do you have to speak before your sentence is enacted? I'm innocent. I shouldn't even be here. And I continue to struggle against the manacles. Struggling will get you nowhere. Baracus, you are hereby convicted of theft, arson, causing public fear, trespassing, assault, multiple counts of murder, heresy against the light, and being a fiendish monstrosity. What final words do you have to speak before your sentence is enacted? You have obviously made your judgment the moment I stepped into this city. Long before I, I even stole the loaf of bread, which was the only crime I actually committed. So, come on then. Be done with it. I'll be glad to be rid of this place. Lucky we allow you to live by the grace of the light. The David continues. With the convictions now uttered for the record, it is now time for these prisoners to enter the darkness and see if their inner light may guide them or if the darkness consumes them. The uniformed guards drag the prisoners towards the center of the room where a large hole has appeared below the seal. One by one, their restraints of the, of the prisoners are removed and they're forced to enter the darkness willingly or are forced towards it. Do you all go willingly? I just sit down where I am. Please don't send me down that hole. I'm too... too intelligent to die. Nope. Time to go, mate. And two guys just pick you up and throw <laughs> you in there. I would just give a swift nod to, to my fellow guardsmen, or ex-fellow guardsmen, and just get led towards the darkness. You feel a tap on your shoulder and something heavy is slipped into your jumpsuit. Let's give a swift nod. Chuck, do you proceed? I'm standing on the edge with my eyes closed. If you dally too long, they will push you, as this is. That happened to other people. And I get pushed down. They proceed to push you. Barakas. I, um, I just have my head down, hair draped over my eyes, and uh, I step myself into the darkness. Very good. And Thistle, do you go I'm, willingly? No. I fight, my, I fight against the manacles and I fight against them as they're pushing me towards yeah. the hole. 
since you've been fighting against the manacles the whole time, they were prepared for this. And as they're releasing their manacles, four guards come from behind and they just force you down, push you into the place, into the darkness. As you all enter the darkness, you quickly land on solid ground. However, it's on a heavy incline. You begin to descend further downwards into the darkness as this ramp you're descending twists and turns going deeper into the darkness. Left, right, right, left. You twist and turn as the seconds pass and turn into minutes. The darkness and swift movement are disorienting and makes it hard to focus. Occasionally you bump against the sides of this tunnel, but otherwise it feels wide open on both sides. Eventually your descent starts to slow and you feel the end is in sight. You hear fearful voices below you. Callum, your feet touch the ground and you can sense the other prisoners nearby. Chark, the darkness ends and you see the end of the tunnel below and other prisoners clearing a path below. And other prisoners clearing a path for you. Thistle, due to your large stature and your, um, your flailing that you are resisting, you're coming in extremely fast. As you feel the ground rushing towards you, you raise your head to view ahead and crack your head against a rocky outcropping. Everything goes dark. Tweak, you are probably enjoyed your time going down this wild ride, but alas, all things must come to an end. When the darkness ends, you see the body of the half-giant prisoner that was accompanying you. You land on her unbreathing body. Baracus, it must have been a relief to be out of your restraints, but your time descending in the darkness felt unnatural in a way you can't describe. Eventually, the darkness recedes, and you see a pool of blood under the fallen body of the half-giant prisoner. Lucky this big body broke my fall. Or did you break her fall? Um, I just start slapping the, the the body underneath me. Are you okay in there? She cracked her head pretty hard when she came down. I guess um, we we need all the allies we can get down here. I I don't know if anyone else is seen much of this place um and i'll just put my hand on uh, this creature's forehead and um put a lay of hands one point into uh, her still body you try and nothing happens this person is dead uh, death wow hmm. this is not good I mean, my crimes didn't warrant, warrant this. What did you do? What did you actually do? I can't quite remember, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, there's, I mean, lots of things that were probably illegal. I blew up a few places and uh, sold weapons to uh, uh, goblins for most of my life. I, I'm sure there's some laws against that. I don't know why. I can somewhat understand you being sent down here then. Well, what are you down here for then, huh? Stood up for people that I shouldn't have. Well, who's a bigger fool then? I think, um, looking at all of us, we're all a bit of, uh, fools. Hmm. We're getting, uh, caught, sent down here. Um, I'm just looking over the other people that's sent here and appraising them. How high do you think this is? I mean, if I only had a uh, some sort of spell to get us out of here, we could probably break loose. Mm, I'm not strong enough. When we get back up there, though, that just throw us back down. Not if you're invisible. Can you turn invisible? No. Do you need to? Um... It's not very useful, is it? Not at this stage, but I'm sure I can learn. I'm a quick learner. Do you need things to cast your spells? Do you pull it from within? I tap. I look into my little sewn-in pocket of my um of my sack that I put together for clothing. The little cockroach pokes his head out. It's just you're all wearing the jumpsuit, remember? But you were able to smuggle your one item in yeah uh you see his little horn his little antennas peek out the top of my jumpsuit 
and there's a cockroach there. I give him a bit of a, um, a grit of uh, a meal that I ate earlier. It's potentially in bits of my hair and so forth. We can nibble on that for a while. So that's it. Where to put our hopes in a uh, roach? It's not just any roach. It's a very wise companion of mine. And it's the only friend I ever had. And who, who are you? Well, this is Giznat, and I point towards the roach. And you can call me Tweak. And who, who are you? Oh, I um, my name here is Barakus. About the rest of you. I am Callum. Callum O'Sullivan. As to whether there's any light in this area, or are we like standing in pitch blackness? No, so you are standing in pitch blackness, and the other, other than you, the five of you, there are five, well, one of you is now currently dead, um, but there are five other humanoids, and they are sort of feeling around in the darkness, trying to look for things, and seem to be picking up bits of bone and stuff that they found in the mud. And you're standing, it's like it's muddy here. Like there seems to be some sort of water that gets in here sometime for some reason or a low water table. I'm and start, um, can you describe the these five people? Sure. There are five in total. Three of them appear to be male. Two of them appear to be female. One of the females appears to be half elf. And one of the males is a little bit beefier and stronger than the others. I feel around because I've, I've felt a weight going into my pants or my jumpsuit before I was pushed down. I feel around and figure out what that is. Yeah, so you have a look around, you feel around, and this is actually a short sword wrapped in cloth that was smuggled onto you right before you right before you were pushed down the hole. Um, you're not sure where it came from, but with your past of being a guard, maybe it was one of your friends. You... There was a... Um... Uh, a human or a creature there that I wasn't able to to um, rouse. That's the, that that was the furbolg half giant. And is that the only sort of incapacitated body down here that I can see? It's not incapacitated, my, uh... right? It's dead. Um. Well, give me a perception check to see what you see. Everyone, why don't you all give me a perception check? That is definitely not one of my strong points. 23 6 for me 14 so yeah you're not you're sort of fixated on the body ash you can't really see anything else like you know you see like little bits of mud sticking out from the bones but you can't really see any other bodies um you can sort of see like a rat hanging off to the side um but it's sort of keeping its distance Mimbo, you're having a look at these tunnels and you see a very large tunnel to the south. To the west, there's lots of little tunnels, but they're too small for a humanoid to get through. Um, to the north and east, there are smaller tunnels. Um, Callum, you um, can't see, obviously, but you can hear. You can hear that there is scratching coming from the west. Um, and you, your perception, you also hear something coming in from the east, but it's a little bit further away. Um, and anyone that got above 20 would be able to hear that as well. As you guys are standing here and uh, talking and getting to know yourself, um, there's a couple things slide down the chute. Um, it's basically a couple of backpacks with some things tied to it and also a sack. I call up there, where's my robot? The thieves? <laughs> I'm going to have a look at the backpack, actually, and see what's in it. Um, funnily enough, uh, there is, uh, after that, a couple of minutes after that, there is just a big chunk pile of junk that just gets fallen down there, and it basically looks like just mostly metal junk to everyone except for Tweak, who is very happy to see. Well, it's broken, and it needs a lot of work, but it is your junk. It's a pretty sweet. I just start scrounging and put it onto my back. I'll tie it to myself. Protus okay. save us. We're relying on junk and a cockroach. You said there were uh, bones about. Um, I'm going to go grab one of those bones. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. There's a few bones around, and um, 
some of the humans are sort of struggling around the ground trying to look for bones and they're like uh, we found some over here uh, they think they were humanoid but these femurs should work as a club that they might break if we've grown into anything well, um, I'm going to check uh... out the backpacks that got thrown down with us yep and Ash what were you doing sorry I'm just going to grab um, two two femurs. One of them I will rip off a bit, bit of um, fabric out of my uh, jumpsuit, and I will um, do a firebolt spell to try to put up a torch. Yeah, give me just a survivor roll to see how well you make your torch. And that's a natural twenty. First that 20 of the game. Yeah, you make a very serviceable torch um, and you're able to spread some light on the situation and you say, thank you, thank you. Um, can't see anything down here. Chuck, you go over to these packs. There's two backpacks um, and there's a sack. Which one do you go for a look at? I think I'll have a look at one of the backpacks first. Okay, so one of the backpacks you go over um, and it's got basically a bedroll tied to the bottom and it's got a rope on the side you open it up and you find a mess kit a tinder box um some torches um a few rations and a water skin how many rations and how many torches so there's 10 torches and there's 10 rations in that one backpack okay so bedroll rope mess kit tinder box torches rations and a water skin does it have water in it yes okay and in the other backpack, um, if like now that you're you got that one, like, if, if, does anyone else go over to the other backpack? Oh, I'll get the I, I do. Yeah, as well. Sack. Oh, I think it is. Sack. Yeah. Yeah. So there's well, there's a backpack and a sack. So tweak. If you go over to the sack, you open it up, and there's just rations in here, just ration packs. Um, you estimate probably uh, about thirty days worth of rations. Oh. I'm going to um, take the one that um, has the equipment in it and I'm going to just sling it over my back. Okay. And then in the other backpack, um, you go over. It's also got um, the um, rope tied to it. There is no bedroll, though. Um, you have a look and it's got a crowbar, a hammer, 10 pittons, 10 torches, a tinderbox, 10 days of rations, and a water skin. So all in all, you have 50 days of rations. Um, two water skins and just a few other supplies. And then obviously in the prep, you all have your one starting item as discussed. Um, so crowbar pittons, which I assume there are 10, anything else? Yeah. Uh, the 10 torches and another tinder box and 10 days of rations to make it 50 rations, 50 days total. Okay. While these guys are looking at all the things that were thrown down, I might actually be kind of heading towards that, uh, offshoot that I heard things coming from just kind of keeping an eye on it and if anything approaches I'll, I'll speak up yeah do we want to split this up I've got 30 rations so I'm happy to take 10 days and I believe there's enough for everyone his, his 20 I rations think, I mean we'll probably have to share but like I think we'll just keep it in the sack because like there's nothing there's no other thing to carry them in I think they just need to stay in the sack because mm -hmm. I don't think it's very effective if we carry around rations in our hands, trying to stumble in the dark. I think the little one means um, to split up the mix of what we have, but um, that's okay. Yes. What did you say your name was? Tweak. Um, I've got a crowbar and pittons and torches in here. You're welcome to them if we need, but let's just um, let's just try to get to a better position and try to figure out what what we've what we're down in here well i'm not very hungry now so you can take the 30 rations um and just uh don't let me starve down here i trust yep right you are now um callum give me a perception check since you're going to just look out where you heard something come and the first natural one of the game Natural one. That would be a seven. Anything. Yeah, you're not sure if you heard something after all. Like, maybe it was just the echoes of this place. You can't hear anything right now. Well, if I think it's all gone quiet, I might walk back to the group and 
just say I, I thought I heard something, but I think it's gone. Um, should we be going through the pockets of these these dead, or do you think they're just uh, dead without anything? Nope. There's well, only one dead. Right? It's thing. just a fur bog. Is there anyone else dead? Well, it sounded like there were. It's just bones. Oh, just bones. No. So on that note, Lizzie. Yes. You hit your head and you died on the way down there. Um, you, your character died and everything went dark. But something strange is happening as you're lying there and all of a sudden you feel this connection to the nature and you've had connections with nature before, but this one feels different. It's something, it's something subterranean, something something almost a connection to like a network that you've never felt before. And any, as you guys are looking at this body, you notice that these mushrooms have started to grow over the body um, quite rapidly. Um, but it's surprising that it's happened so quickly. Um, and you're not sure if it's something to do with this place or what, but they are basically covering her body and as they essentially cover her body, she gets up. And you are certain this person died. Fuck it. A zombie? Oh, well, we don't have to worry about food. You grow mushrooms out of your body. Excuse me? Who are you? Creek. I point to your mushroom. You're currently I... covered in mushrooms, Lizzie. I slap him away from my mushrooms. And I'm trying to work out why these mushrooms are on me. Give, Give it a me a uh, nature check. Eight. You're, I have no idea. You've never seen mushrooms like this. You've never heard of mushrooms like this. Um, they seem to have grown up out of the dirt and just fused with your body. They don't hurt. Um, but you feel different. Okay. Still a bit confused and I have no idea who this little person is in front of me. Uh, it looks, I don't know if it's a halfling or a gnome. He's a goblin. I am not a goblin. I'm a gnome, thank you. You look like a goblin. Well, you smell like a goblin. And trust me, I know what they smell like. Because you're a goblin. <laughs> Does anyone have anything intelligent to say in this group? What is your name, little one? Tweak. Um, Tweak is my name. It's nice to meet you, Tweak. And it's nice and... to meet you, Mushroom Lady. Uh, my name is Thistle. What? Why are we down here? You don't remember getting thrown down? No, I just woke up and from this really weird dream and I just see you four individuals and I'm so confused. There's more of us back there. As you I say, can't... as you look over to the other group, um, they're sort of gathering over on one side in the and like um, in the light of Baracus and one of them's looking over to the western side where the, where the smaller tunnels are. And all of a sudden, from out of these small holes, a swarm of rats just erupts and launches themselves onto this person. And with a nat 20, this person gets chewed up and is bleeding everywhere. They are gone and we will roll initiative. Man, I'm still hungry. You have to worry about food now. You got rats. Great source of protein. Um, just shout him out when you've got him. Eleven. You're not a goblin. Eleven here. Eleven. Five here. Five. Twelve. Twenty on initiative. Matt, Eleven. Ash is on fire. Nice. Oh, Second natural twenty. Eleven. And another 11. Who wants to go first? Callum or Tweak? 
first? Ah. Uh, you both got 11. Uh, I'm preoccupied by watching the uh, rats consume this body alive or dead. Um, so I'll give it to Callum. Yeah, cool. Cool, sounds good. Um, so, first up is Barakas Sorel. Hey, um, so I've got a pretty clear sort of line of sight to these, uh, this pestilence of rats. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to fire off a firebolt towards them. Please do, roll your attack. So, Out. 11 to hit. Cool, and that hits for four damage as you burn up several of these rats with your firebolt. Cool. Um, one of the, um, the, the burly human male gets up and peels up his um, bone club and has a swing, um, but he misses. Um, Chuck, you're next. Um, Chuck says, uh, you know, um, gestures in the holy faith of, is it Protus, I think? Yes. This is the god, right? And Protus. He, he says, I call upon thy fire, and he throws a firebolt. Please do. Roll your attack. Yep. Uh, eight, unfortunately. Eight. Eight to hit will miss, unfortunately, as it goes wide as these rats flip, um, swarm out of the way of this firebolt. Chuck does a tactical retreat away from the rats. Yeah, so do you go down one of the tunnels or do you just go to like a court the far end of the room? The far end of the room. I don't think I want to yep. risk a tunnel yet. Cool. Callum. I would draw my short sword and start heading towards the in here. Yeah, no, you, the, the room's fairly small. Like you can get over there and make an attack. Perfect. So that's a 17. Yeah, that definitely hits. And nine damage. Nine damage. You take a swing with, or a stab with your short sword, um, but you get a couple of rats on it, but it just doesn't seem to make a huge connection with these rats. Cool. Weak. I... Do a little dance and put my hand on my finger and cast Expedious Retreat on myself. Okay. Uh, that should get me out of trouble, and I run as fast as I can away from the rats. Cool, cool. Um, the half elf, the half elf female, um, looks over to the rats um, and um, throws a bone bone shard in the shape of a dagger at them. Um, which hits um, and actually does decent damage with it. Um, yeah, there's a total of six damage. Uh, as you just skewers several of these rats with this boned dagger. Um, Thistle. Uh, I'm going to hurl a bolt of fire at these rats. Um, does a 15 hit. Uh, yes. And that's eight damage. Eight damage. Excellent. With that, that huge firebolt, um, the rats seem to be mostly dispersed. Um, but as you're looking over there, you can hear more coming out of the warrens. But you've almost dealt with this swarm. Um, since there's only a few left, the last two, um, the two commoners will have a swing with their bone clubs. Um, and both hit... Um, so you get to do max damage as well. So actually these last two commoners just start slamming down with their bone clubs, um, and manage to defeat this swarm, but you can hear another one. Should probably Excellent. get the hell out of here. I think so. Um, Barakas, it is your turn. Um, you can't see them, but you can hear rats coming right now. Um, call over to Callum. Uh, any idea um, which tunnel's the best, or each each is wor each is bad as each other? Um, I'll keep hurling uh, a firebolt uh, at the mess of rats. Kind of this um, way so there's none out at the moment. There's no rats currently visible. You can just hear them coming out through the walls. So you can okay. step aside and prepare a firebolt or something like that. Yes, I will do that. Cool. Um, as you guys are doing this, you can start hearing noises coming from the East Tunnel, um, and you know that there is something else coming. 
but they are not quite here yet. Um, but if you look down there, you might see something. And now it's the bruiser guy's turn, and he basically picks up a blood bone and uses it as a club, and he goes, I ain't going down without a fight. And he just takes up a position over on the east tunnel, just waiting for something to hit. So is this the same side that the uh, rats are coming from? The, uh, the rats side? are the west, and it's yep. like very like several small tunnels, and then there's like a smallish tunnel, but like you could definitely like it's about four to four, maybe about a meter and a half, meter and a half high. It's a little bit tall, short, but like it, you could definitely walk through it. Um, that's on the east. Okay. And that's where something else is coming. Um, and the the he actually looks down there and says, oh, "I can't see. I don't. I can't, I can't see in the dark. Someone else will have to have a look." Uh, Chuck. I mean, he's going to try another fireball. Try his luck again. So you're going to look down the west east tunnel and shoot it whatever's and have a look and see what's coming? Yeah, I'm going to have a look and then... Am I close to it or do I need to walk towards yeah, it? Yeah, you can. You just have to move a little bit around the room. The room's not too big. Um, it's probably about 40 by 50 feet. Um, yeah, I'm going to peek down there. Yeah. So you're going to go over to the east tunnel have a look? Yeah, I'm just going to have a look. Okay, so you've got 60 feet of dark vision, yeah? That's correct. So you go have a look, and about 30 feet down the tunnel, um, you see, um, about 20, 30 feet, you see a group of kobolds, these little dragon-like people. That have okay. Just, that have just sort of run, sprinted into the area. Do they look hostile? They look, ho they look hostile. There are five of them, um, and they are wielding slings and daggers. Okay, um, is anyone that looks like the leader, or like, do they all, are they like all look similar? They all look pretty similar. Okay, um, I am going to mind sliver one of them. Okay. Uh, my eyes turn pitch black, and you need to do it in save. Okay. That's fail. That's a five. Uh, I believe it's 1d4. 1d6. The... 1d4 say... is a penalty. Yeah, the penalty. So you take a penalty of 3 to your next save, that particular character. And he also clutches his head as he takes maximum damage. Oh, that if he takes that much damage, he just clutches his head and falls down dead. Does that noticeably, like make them stop or pause in any way uh it does um a little bit but they're still coming they look hungry okay so i'm i mean whatever movement i have left i'm gonna try and move like as far as i can from both the rats and the kobolds and i'm gonna use my free action to scream cabal incoming i think that's enough for six seconds yeah that's all good uh, Callum. I might also use my bonus yeah. action to... Um, is Callum within 30 feet? Yeah, yeah, you're also within 30 feet. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to establish dinner. the telepathic link. Okay. Sounds Ooh. good. Um, Callum, it is your turn. I'm um, hearing that there's incoming. Um, I'm going to dash towards that side of the room. And kind of uh, put myself in between them and the the group of us, and um, I will take the dodge action. Okay, excellent. Week. As I was running towards the east tunnel, away from the rats, I stop as I have heard this kobolds to the left of us, rats to the right, and I'm stuck in the middle. Yep. I will. Uh, quickly make a calculation in my head and stand next to my partner or stand next to Callum yep well Callum's right at the front line of the eastern tunnel like he's right at the front yeah can I see the cable there yep you'd be able to see them they're about like 25 feet down the tunnel so I don't know how much movement I'd have left as we've got expeditious through. retreat so you can move pretty far yeah as a bonus section it gives me an extra 10 feet um, in that case, I will shoot one of them, the most angriest looking one, and I'll say, Stop, you hungry little beasts! 
hate kobolds, and I will shoot a ray of frost. Okay. Roll to hit. That would be a natural one. And a natural one goes wide. <laughs> so seven. Uh, and I you... look at my finger, and I run 20 feet in the next other direction. Cool. Cool. Um... Okay, so the halfling female sees all that. After she hears about the kobolds, she's going to sort of do it, try to hide a little bit, and then she's going to try to throw another bone dagger at one of these kobolds. Um, but she misses and goes wide. I rolled it. Two and a one after, with advantage on her. She missed. Um, Thistle. I'm going to throw another bolt of fire uh, towards the kobolds coming towards us. Yeah. Uh, th there's 14 hit. Definitely, yes. And that's seven damage. Seven damage. Yeah, you take out a second kobold um, as um, as they are charging into the room. Do you do anything special with your movement, or are you just sort of staying in the center of the room? I'm trying to stay center. Um, it's probably the best place to be at the moment. Okay. So all of a sudden, from the western side, two more swarms of rats come in, and they're just going to try to go to those commoners. <laughs> Um, yes, they do, and they just get chewed right up. The rats just chew up those other two commoners. They are gone. And... We didn't even know their names. <laughs> no, that's better that way. It's better that way. The rations will go further. Wow, Callum. Are you saying this telepathically to me? I might be... I'm thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, telepathic speech, thinking and saying is pretty much the same thing. Indeed. Um, okay, so they're all gone. Um, okay, Baraka Sorel, we're back to the top. Okay, um, I'm going to go put my sort of back um, towards one of the walls near the north tunnel. Okay. Um, and face the kobolds, and I'm going to say, um, this is your chance to flee, unless you want to end up a uh, smouldering pile of ash. You don't want this fight, and I'm going to lob a um, firebolt um, in their, into their midst. Okay. Um, sec. So roll 24th, with a 24 obviously hits, and that 7 for hits. damage. Yeah, and you take out a third kobold. So, yeah, nice hit. Um, so there's only two left of this group, but you can hear more behind them. Um, so you're sort of, let's say you finish your movement, that's your turn. Okay, so yeah, the two in the front, the two kobolds left standing, um, just continue charging, um, and they're going to try to um, stab at um, Callum with disadvantage, because he's dodging. Um, so that's only a 10 to hit, um, but as the second one gets there, he seems to have an advantage because of the other kobold, so it's just going to be a straight roll, and that is a 14 to hit. Meets AC. That is five damage as you get stabbed by this little kobold guy, as you have two of them on you, and you see another, another four now about 30 feet behind them coming in, but... Um, actually, they would get slingshots off it not on you. At advantage. Uh, straight roll, you're still dodging. Um, okay, so that's actually a crit. So that's nine damage. Mm -hmm. That's a miss. That's a uh, that's a eleven. That's a six. And that's an eight, so they all miss. Good. Um, okay, that crit hurt, though. Um, okay, so with that... Um, oh, I forgot that he's held action, but um, the burly male would have taken a swing with his club at the kobolds, um, and that would just would have missed on his first hit, but now it's his turn, and he's going to try to take a swing at them. This time he's going to try to flank them. Oh, no, he's not, because they're in the front. He's going to stand by the side. Um, and that will hit for 1d4 of damage. Um, and he managed to box one of the kobolds on the head, and one of them looks quite badly hurt now. 
Um, one is fresh, and then you have four more in the back, as well as these two swarms of rats. Um, Chuck, you're up. Uh, Chuck is going to mentally assault one of the cabals that is hanging off um, Callum. Okay, so the hurt one or the fresh one? Uh, hurt one. It's I heard in these minds. Um, okay, that is a 12. 12 is a fail. Okay, so roll your damage. Cool. Probably don't bother with the d4. Oh, uh, because it's going to die? No. It, yep, yeah, it died. <laughs> oh, damn it! I'm not getting the use of my damn d4s. So um, have... And then he's going to use his reaction to mentally uh, say to Callum... Um, House as rail stands by its retainers. But oh, no one else can hear this except Callum. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. Um, Callum, it is your turn. Well, so you have one kobold on you. You have four more coming in that just threw shot slings at you. Um, and then you have two swarms of rats behind you, which you can hear. Well, I think I'm going to have to try and thin them as much as I can. So I will take a swing. Yep. Roll the hit. Oh, that is a nat 20. I mean, just roll the damage to see how much damage you do, but I'm pretty sure you skewer this last cabal you're in melee with. That would be 13 damage. Yeah, he is heavily, heavily skewered. And um, for my bonus action, I will use second wind, because I am hurt. Okay, yeah, no, good, good. Um, next up is Tweak. So you have four more kobolds shooting slings from the east, and you have two swarms of rats in the west that have just killed, that have just eaten um, these commoners to death. <laughs> okay. Uh, I see an exit to the east. You only have four more kobolds left. Uh... I'm just going to fire a frost bolt at the cobalt uh, that I can see. Yep. Yeah, so oh, you're over on the off. east here with Callum and this burly male. Um, yep, yeah, roll the hit. Ah, oh, that's better. 25. Uh, Definitely hits. Oh, sorry, 24. Um... I do one d eight damage. Five frosty damage. Five frosty damage. Yes, you managed to just drop out another one of these kobolds, and there is three more standing there swinging slings. I can uh, run and hide behind Chuck. Okay. Um, okay, it's the half elf's turn. Um, they are going to sling a bone dagger at the um, the rats. Um, that's gonna hit. Okay, she's done a little bit of damage there as she swings into the rats. Um, and then it moves on to Thistle's turn. So you have rats to the west and you have kobolds to the east. Well, I'm going to go after the kobolds again because they seem to be more of a danger. So I'm going to throw another bolt of fire at them. Um, does an 18 hit? Yes. And that's four damage. Four damage. Excellent. So yeah, you hurt one of these kobolds badly, but he's still standing. So there's still three there. Um, no, I'm happy where I am. Okay. So the swarm of rat, these two swarms of rats finished um, sort of taking out these commoners and then rather than just staying there, they continue moving um, towards the group. Um, and they're just, I'm just going to roll a random dice to see who it's going to go for out of the people. It's not going to be the people on the eastern side, so it's going to be someone else. Okay, so the first one's going to go for Thistle, as it's these rats swarm onto you, yeah. and that's a seven to hit. That misses. Okay, and the next group is going to go to Barakas. 
And that's a nine to hit. A uh, miss. That's a miss. Okay, but you now currently have rats just swarming all over you. Um, and there's something glinting coming in from the south. You're not quite sure what it is, but there's something... There's something in the southern tunnel. It's sort of just, just catching the light, but you can't really make it out what it is unless you have a look. And we are back to the top with Baracus Sorel. So you're currently swarmed by rats, as you also have um, the kobolds to the east. Alrighty, so I'm um, going to try to get these rats off me. Um, my sort of hands go into flame and then they they kind of come down to a sacred flame I'm casting. Okay, I'll roll a save. Yep. Decent oh, they rolled a nat 20. Oh, they wow. rolled a nat 20. That was lucky of them. Uh, okay. Not yeah, nat 20s. A lot of nat 20s this game. It's weird. Um, and I... South. Um, if I... I can't really make my way towards the south without um, coming in upon another fight, can I? Uh, you can have a look to the south. You've got these rats swarming you, but you can try to have a look and see what's going through there. I'll let you do a free perception check to get a better look. Yeah. Or a bonus yeah, section perception check. Uh, what is that? The 19. It's odd. It's, it's, you can't really see what it is, but it seems to be some sort of armor. Um, disembodied armor moving through. Um, there seems to be just like it's like a bit of armor, like a rusty blade, just sort of moving down the tunnel. Like the light is sort of catching those things for some reason, but you're not sure. They're not. No one's holding them, so you're not sure. Okay. Okay. So these three last kobolds all charge in to Callum and um, the burly male. Um, and go, um, that's an eight, so that'll miss. Um, and then this guy, um, that will hit the, um, the male for four damage. And Callum, another hit for you is a 15. Yep, that's it. And that's five damage. Okay. Um, the, the male, the burly male swings his couple up at the injured kobold and yep, he takes him out. So there's only two kobolds left. Um, and we move on to Chuck. Um, yeah. Um, so what is the lay of the land now? So you have rats swarming on Thistle and Baracus. You have a couple of kobolds still swinging in at the burly male and Chuck. Um, and then... You mean Callum, right? I'm Chuck. Callum, yes, Callum, sorry. And then you still have something coming in, some sort of something catching the light from the south. Mm. Can I see what it is? You can give me a perception check. Like, if you take a full perception check and like, go over and have a look, you don't get a good look or... As in, or like, I have to just... use my action, right? Um, I'll let you do, like, a bonus action, quick perception check as well. Okay, let's do a bonus action, quick perception check. I'm not very good at perception, though. Fuck. Yeah, you're really not sure. Um, it's just something catching the light over there. Uh, but it's a bit hard to see with everything going on. Okay. Um, hmm. Does the battle look like it's going well or badly? Uh, the Cabal battle looks like it's going well. The rat battle does not look like it's going well. Oh. Okay. Well, so on average, it looks like it's going okay. Okay, so this is not like... Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to um, mind sliver the um, Cabal next to Callum. Okay. That'll fail. Okay. There's two left. Oh, very badly. One. It barely has a migraine. Yes, uh, but it's still damage is damage. Uh, Callum. It uh, takes two from its save in the future. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll keep note of that. It has to make a save. Cool. Callum. 
You have two kobolds left on you. One is slightly hurt. I'm... I'll just take a swing at the remaining guy. Two. There's two left. Oh, sorry, the, the one on lower health. Yeah. That is a 18 to hit, and that would be 10 damage, so I probably should have gone for the other. Probably, but choices are made. It was only one damage, so it's not a big difference. Yeah, there's only one left. Um... Okay. Anything else in your turn? That is all. Weak. I will destroy you. And I'll shoot a ray of frost. At the rats or the kobolds? The kobolds. Okay. I'm going to really fixate on the kobolds. The rats have killed three people, but you guys are going for the kobolds. Okay. I'll clear them up. But I don't think I will until 11. No, it just misses, unfortunately. <sighs> Drat. Uh, and I will stay next to uh, Callum. Okay. Um, so um, the half female half elf is going to go over to Thistle and try to stab at these rats um, to try to thin them out. Um, and she is going to hit. Um, and she actually makes a second stab and that misses um with a she makes a second stab with a second bone dagger in her off hand um that's a pretty good damage it's a good stab um as now this swarm feels like it's heavily reduced um but still standing this is the thistle swarm so thistle it is your uh, your turn you've got this swarm of rats which is being stabbed at by this female half elf and being thinned out but it's still quite significant can i try and shake them off or pull them off me um you could try but really like you could disengage it and move away from them um and that would accomplish that or you could just attack them i'm gonna disengage as i want to see what that glimmer of something that I saw down the tunnel before. Okay. And then... Yeah, yeah. so you want to do another perception check as well? just to, Or are you going to move her down towards it? I'm going to do a perception check towards it. Okay. Um, 10 plus 5, so that's 15 perception. Yeah, you also see this armor just sort of floating in the air. Um, that's sort of catching the light in a weird way. You're not really sure what it is, though. I'm going to start moving towards it. Okay, you start moving towards this thing. Okay, it is now the rat's turn, and since you let him disengage from one, that swarm is going to move on to the female half elf, um, and that's going to be a 17 to hit and for six damage. Um, and the other ones are still on Baracus, so they're going to try to bust them. Yeah. Um, and that is a 14 to hit Baracus. Yeah. Uh, eight damage. All right, that's the rat's turn done. Now, Liz, as you're moving towards the south, you actually see that this armor that you've been looking at starts moving towards you, and then it starts surging towards you, and all of a sudden you've got this sheet of this soft gelatinous material in front of you, and I'm going to need you to make a dexterity saving throw. That's a 13 for that. 13. Excellent. So you managed to save and you're pushed five feet back or to the sides as this gelatinous wall is sort of comes right up into your face and then you get pushed back by it. Um, and okay. yeah, you realize that this is some sort of gelatinous cube. I'll tell any, everybody in the room what I see. Yep. Um, Baracus. You still have a swarm of rats on you. I am going to um, do a lay on hands on myself. Are you going to use the full nine points or how much? I'm going to use the rest of my four points. I thought you should have nine. First level? Yeah, five, you're level two. Five points. Um, okay, I didn't factor that so you'd in. So you have ten points. So, okay, so I will use, um, I already used one um, on that on that body. 
back there. So I'll just um, I'll use everything bar one. Yep. Yep. That's good. Um, okay. So that was your action. You're just going to stay, just hang out with these rats for now. Yep. Okay. Um, so it's the kobold's turn, and they, the last remaining kobold, just starts screaming and runs away. Um, Callum, you can take an opportunity attack if you want, or you can hold, save your reaction. Of course. Get him. But there's a very good chance I'll miss with a nine. I mean. Uh, and the burly male also missed with his bone club. I'm standing next to Callum, I did say. Would I get an attack of opportunity? Uh, I thought you said you were standing next to Chuck. Yeah, you were hiding behind me. Oh, yeah, Chuck. You're out. Chuck and Callum. Chuck is like, I think Chuck's over like on the north wall, I think. Um, okay, so that was the burly male. Oh, no, so that was the Cabal's turn. The burly male is going to turn his attention to the rats. Warming the half elf female. It's going to take a swing. Um, that will just hit. Or oh, one damage. Okay. Um, and now we're back to Chuck. So you have this. Good luck, Chuck. Gelatinous cube of some sort that's moved in from the south, as well as these two swarms of rats one swarming the half elf female and one swarming the tiefling. Bold has run away. Remember, Chuck? I'm going to chase down the fleeing kobold. Um, okay. And will I get within range 60 feet of him? Uh, you would if you ran all the way over to the eastern tunnel, yeah. Okay, cool. And then I'll mind sliver him again. Okay. He fails. Roll your damage. Is this the one that was... Um, no, this one's fresh. But you managed to get him, and he... Um, yeah, he goes down, just holding his brain in pain. Uh, okay, so that was your movement. Anything for a bonus action? No. Cool. Tell him. The balls are all gone. You still have rats. Well, you can hear the rats. Um, and you know about this cube from uh, from Thistle. What would it be to pick up one of the slings and a, a few some bullets or some rocks or whatever from one of these kobolds' bodies? Um, if you want to do all of that, I would say that's uh, an action to get like all of that, and uh, but then you'd be ready to go next turn. Yeah, I might need to. I'm quite injured. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll grab that um, and kind of start moving up towards, uh, probably towards the the rats, but. About 10 feet away. Okay. Sounds good. Week. How to deal with these rats. Okay, so you've got um, one swarm on the tiefling and one swarm on this halfling female. Are they re relatively close together? Uh, Close-ish. They're probably about 10, 15 feet apart. I will. And they look like they're pretty happy at the moment. <laughs> They're gobbling people up, left, right, and center. Yeah, they're just chomping into, yeah. Oh, well, I will cast Fairy Fire. You will also catch, um, you would also catch your allies if you did that, but yes, you can. And that would give the enemy advantage on yeah, attacks against them? as well, if they fail to save. Okay. Because this forms actually in the same space yeah, as the true. players. True, true. I will just ray of frost them. Okay, roll the hit. Hasn't worked. Which one? Me. The ones on the tiefling or the ones on the half the female, half and female? Uh I'll go the halfling female. She's probably okay. more my height. Yep. Uh twenty one. That hits. Mm, DH. Five points of frost damage. I can use the frost damage. Yeah, there's that swarm is definitely getting very thinned out now as you blast them with your frost energy. Okay. Anything specific with your movement? I am going to stay next to Chuck. Okay, so Chuck's moved over to the eastern tunnel, um, sort of chasing down the kobolds. Cool. Um okay, so she is now going the she's been swarmed by these rats and she's going to try to stab at them with her with her bone daggers. 
Um, and that's going to hit. Um, and she manages to start to kill a couple more rats. Um, but there's still just a few rats on her. Um, Thistle, it's your turn. You are right next to this gelatinous cube. I'm going to back away from the cube. I'm going to throw a firebolt at it. Okay, so as you back away, all of a sudden this pseudopod arm-like thing reaches out and tries to hit you, and that is a 17 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Okay, so that's a total of seven acid damage. Um, but you may move away and roll your attack. All right, for my attack, uh, that's 14. 14 hits. And that's six damage. Six damage. No, I well, that... Sorry? Yeah. I also am going to cast a healing word towards the human because I see that he is a bit sluggish. That's a, the blind human, yep. Yes, Come. and that's... Yes, and he gets three health. Okay. Three health. Okay. Is that right? With, with, what's your wisdom modifier? Uh... Wisdom is plus five, so that's eight health. Okay, eight health. Cool. Cool, cool. Much better. Thank you. Okay, so this swarm tries to make its attacks on... So that's a hit on the thing, on the half of the half um, for one damage. Um, and also for against Barakas. Barakas, that is a 16 to hit. Mm -hmm. yeah. You take five damage. Uh, yep, these things haven't been doing um, poison damage by any chance, have they? No, they're just, they're just rats. They're just biting you. Good to know. Um, okay, and that is their turn. Now, this cube is going to move in. I'm just trying to think of the positioning in the room. Um, it's going to go for... Um, this will move too far away. Um, it will go for the burly male. Um, so it moves up to them and takes a swing. And he goes down, shrieking in pain. As he's sort of, as he gets, as his flesh starts melting from this pseudopod attack. Um, Barakas. So you're still swarmed by rats, um, yep. and there's also Can't this human. Sacred flame? Yes, the sacred flame. That's a fail. That's a, yeah, 11. Okay. Uh, you rolled an oven? Yeah. So one radiant. One okay. radiant. Okay. Cabal's uh, out of it, um, as is the burly male, Chuck. Okay, so Cabal's all dead. We yep. have a gelatinous cube coming through, and we and have some rats. You still have rats on um, Barakas and the half elf. What does Callum look like at this point? He's picked up a sling and ready to start using that, but he probably look a bit hurt still. Is he? Is he? Is there enemies near him? No, no, he's no, he's moved away from enemies. Okay, cool. He's and what's the, what's the situation with the half elf right now? Um, she's still got a few rats swarming her, and she's taken a few hits, but she looks like she's... We'll take a few more before she goes down. Yeah, I'm gonna take a shot at the rats. I'm gonna use, instead of, like, a firebolt, I'm gonna try using Mind Sliver. Okay. So, on the, um, on her rats? Yes. Um, that's a nat one. Okay. Nat one is always good. Do six. Two damage, and then three to the save. Two damage was all they needed. Like the last, like half a dozen rats just start screeching and like in pain and just drop. And she nods over at you. Thanks. I'll move towards her. Okay. Um, that was Chuck Callum. So it sounds like the the is right up in my face because I was quite near the burly male. Yeah. And she was, and like it's your, like, and that's where like the half elf is as well, and those rats are. I don't, didn't get a sense of how quick it could move. 
Um, slower than a normal thing, but has a bit of speed still. Okay. It seemed to move fast-ish. Slower than a normal human, though. Okay, okay, that that makes sense. Um, well, I might get within twenty feet of it. Um, and I will take a shot with the sling. Okay. And I will also use favored foe if I hit. That's a twenty. That's a twenty. That hits. And that would be eight damage total. Bludgeoning. Eight bludgeoning damage. Cool. Anything and else? So that bonus action? Nothing else with the bonus action, but if I have a little bit of movement left, I would um, kind of go to what how far I think a normal human would move. So about 30 feet. Yep, that sounds good. Okay. Um, tweak. So there's still more rats. Yeah, so there's only, there's only there's still rats on Baracus, and there's yeah. the cube. There's no more rats. There's only one swarm left. I will shoot at the other swarm, the last remaining swarm, with a frostbolt. Yeah, no one has been helping Baracus. He's just been dealing with this swarm on his own while everyone helped yeah. the half-elf. Poor bastard. Let's see if we can be our friend. Uh, natural one. Natural one is unfortunate. <laughs> will not hit. <laughs> and I'm just mutter some swear words under my breath and they'll end my turn yep okay um so the half elf is going to try to stab at the cube and that will hit that's cost that will also hit okay so she does a nice little bit of damage to this thing um and she's just gonna stand there um well actually you know after she stabs it she's gonna move away um, and it does not even take attacks on her as she moves away. And she will sort of go over to where you are, Chuck. I mean, Callum, sorry. Thistle! Yes. Okay, well, I'm dealing with the cube. Um, so I'm going to roll to hit it with a bolt of fire. And I get a 20. Okay, that hits. Wow. And for damage, that's uh, five damage. Five damage, excellent. And I'm going to cast a healing word on myself because I'm quite low in health as well. Okay. So that's two plus three. That's f um, five health for myself. Okay, sweet, sweet. Okay, it's the swarm's turn. It's going to roll to attack Baracus. Um, and that is a 12 to hit. It's... Okay, that is four damage. Um, and that is the rats. Now it is the cube's turn. Um, and it actually moves over to where um, Callum and the half-elf are. Um, and it seems to go over there and just picks up speed and goes over all the way over. I'm gonna need you both to make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Well, I've got to make it here. She succeeds. That is a 23. Actually, actually no, she fails and you succeed. Okay, so she basically, suppose this thing surges forward, you get pushed out of the way and she gets sucked into this gelatinous um, and does not look, looks very concerned. Um, <laughs> okay, and then we go back up to the top. Baracus, you still got these rats on you. Yep, I can continue dealing with these rats on me. Sacred Flame again? Uh, yes, hopefully it gets them, because that's top damage. Yeah, it's a 12. I fail that one. Okay, and Chuck. Yep. You have the Who's cube gonna... and the swarm of rats. Who's rats. in the cube? Um, the half elf. Ah, damn it. Um... Bonus action, um, I will um, telepathic link, and then I will ask her if she's okay. Are you okay? Um, and then I will... I don't think I can mind sliver a gelatinous cube, right? What's the ruling on that, out of interest? Um, yeah, you can. Okay. Um, well, I will mind sliver the gelatinous cube then. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, it fails. 
kind of has to, right? <laughs> it can, but it can pass. Mind. It could theoretically pass. <laughs> yeah, theoretically. This is working so much better than me rolling, <laughs> to be honest. Two damage. Two damage, and then he will take a uh, two negative penalty on his save. Okay. Just Can he still that. pass with a negative two penalty? Um. Depends. Uh, no, probably not. Or maybe just. Just. Um, okay, cool. Uh, okay, so that was Chuck's turn. Callum, so you do have this gelatinous cube right up in your face now, and you know that the half-elf is in there. Well, I don't think there's any way to get them out besides trying to chop through this thing, I, I'd assume. Not sure, yeah. I mean, I've, I've, I'm assuming I've never faced something like this before, so um, I will... Uh, in my free hand, um, I will just grab up the... Well, I'll probably have the short sword in that hand anyways. Yeah. And um, take a stabby stab at that. It should still be favoured. So that's only a 12 to hit. That hits. Oh, sweet. Very easy to hit these things. <laughs> Good to know. Um, that's 12 slashing. Well, oh, piercing, piercing. Yep, a little piercing. Cool. Sounds good. All right, and you're just standing your ground? Yes, I might as well. Okay, tweak. There are no more rats on my friend over there? Uh, there's still rats on the tiefling, it's yes. Still... Okay, I will help him out. Let's get him. You mean, how much uh, HP do these things have? <laughs> oh, you haven't, you've been cool. missing them a lot, to be fair. I've done uh, nine oh, damage I... on them. Yeah, that's all oh, the nice. damage they've taken, I think. Yeah, that's that's all. It must be very close. Thirteen. Thirteen hits. Yes. And six frosty damage. Six frosty big ones. Um, nice. They are starting to dwindle for sure, but they are still persistent. Um, uh, okay. They're like frozen. Solid. Yeah, some of them are just frozen solid. Yeah, some of them. Some of the other rats are crispy from all the fire bolts. Okay, it's the half elf's turn, and she's going to try to get out of this cube. Um, and she can't. She's just struggling. She can't get out of this thing. Um, and it is then Thistle's turn. Oh, well, I don't have any type of. I don't have my weaponry on me um, or whatnot, so I'm just going to throw another firebolt at it. The cube or the rat? The cube? It at the cube, yep. the, the, the cube's been my focus, and I got an 11 for that. Yeah, it hits. And I got a 6 for damage. 6 damage. Okay. The um, It's the cube's... Oh, no, it's the rat's turn, and they're going to try to bite at Baracus, and that's a hit for 2 damage. Now that there's less of them, they do less damage. But you take 2 more damage. Wow. Yeah. And now it is the cube's turn, and because of that, um, the half of them takes some damage. Six. Yeah, she fades to black, and she appears to go un fall unconscious in there. Baracus Sorel. <sighs> Last dying throws, I'm going to try to flick these um, frozen things off me. Another Sacred Flame, DC 13, Dexterity save. Uh, that's a pass, they got an 18. <sighs> Chuck! Yep. You're going for Let's the cube. Let's do that again. Going for the cube. Um, and with the D4 penalty. Uh, um, okay, so it rolled pretty well with the D4. Oh no, you already rolled the D4 penalty. Um, okay, so Ooh. it got a 10. So it still oh. fails. Yes, so it takes five damage. And I mean, this is the gift that keeps on giving. Um, and it takes a one penalty this time. Five damage, one penalty. Laurie? Oh, sorry, I'll go? Yep. Uh, okay. Well, I guess there's not much to do besides attack this guy in front of me. No, but yeah, he's going for you next. Well, it, it's a cube. <laughs> I rolled a 20. <laughs> nice. 
that will double my favoured food dice as well. 2d6, 2d4, and your dex. That's 20 damage in total. Wow. That's a big hit. Um, yeah, you're just, like just stabbing off chunks of this cube, but it is still standing. I'm still standing. Weak. Are you going to continue on these rats? I'm going to hit these rats. Go again. Oh, 19 plus 6, so 25. That hits. Uh, 2 damage. 2 damage, yeah. You managed to blast a couple more rats with your ice bolt. Ray of frost. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's all. I'm going to go for the cube again. Okay. Another bolt of fire. Um, mm -hmm. Does an 8 hit? Uh, yes. Oh, wow. Very easy to uh, hit. Good to know. And that's four damage. Four more damage. You burn off another of this cube. It sizzles, um, but it is still standing. Um, okay, the swarm of rats. Um, there's only a few left, but it's still going to attack Barakas. Um, and that is a 13 to hit. Down. You're down? Mm hmm Okay, you took one damage, by the way. Yep. But Still down. go down. Cool. Gelatinous cube um, is going to well. First of all, okay. Um, it's going to take try to stick a swing at Callum, um, and that's a nineteen plus four, so it's going to hit you um, for eight acid damage. Ouch. Eight acid damage from the cube. And then go back to top Barakas Sorel. I need a death saving throw. All right, Alex. Hoping for a uh, nat 20 here and not expecting it. Yeah, that is one in the fail column. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Chuck. Uh-huh. So you still have the darkness cube is still standing, but it looks like it's been taking a lot of damage and there's still a few rats that are still swarming over the unconscious tiefling body. No, I'm still going to take advantage of my... Yep. Yep, it fails. Only one sack of damage, unfortunately. One damage. It wobbles ah, and quibbles, yeah. quivers. Two natural ones. Fair enough. Such is life. So uh, is okay. Life. Callum. Kind of do have to take a swing at this again. Sorry, Barakas. <laughs> oh, good, I can't hear you. <laughs> it's being consumed by rats. Uh, that would be a 17, so that would hit. Yeah, it hits. And that is 11 total. It goes down. You take a swing at this last little bit of cube that is there, and you just stab into it, and it just sort of loses its consistency and sloshes down. Um, and the the half the half elf body can be seen unconscious, lying there. I would probably start dashing to well, using my movement to get towards um Barrett and kind of trying to distract the rats or something. Yeah, you can do that. Quick. Seeing my seeing that guy go down, I'm getting a little bit worried. Ah, oh, choices. Do we run? I can come back for the loot later. It's just the rat. You finish the cube now. It's just the rats now. Uh, I will shoot it with the frost bolt. Okay. Uh, eighteen. That hits. Three damage. Three more damage. There's only a few rats left, but they do seem Die. oddly aggressive, these things. Die! Okay, Thistle. Okay, so how many rats are over Bryce's uh, body? I, look, less than ten, more than five. Uh, I, I would firebolt, but I don't want to hurt him even more, so... You won't. You can just go for the rats. It's fine. Okay, I'll fireball them. There's a 16 hit. 16 hits. 
and that's nine damage. Nine damage. You blast a huge firebolt at the last few rats swarming the unconscious tiefling and they go launching across the room and several splat across the walls and start sliding to the ground. And um, we are technically still an in initiative. Um, so, Barakas, I need another death saving throw. Could I, for my oh, bonus got... action, yes. Yes. use my last uh, spell slot and cast a healing word on Barakas? You may. That's a four plus five, so you get nine health, Baracus. Nine health, very good. Well, oh, whoa, whoa, what happened? What happened? And I'm like, wake up, and I'm patting, <laughs> patting myself off flames. <sighs> well, that's it for this episode of the High or Lows podcast. If you'd like to get in touch, you can find us on Twitter at High or Lows with underscores between the words, or you can find me at Feebster. Thanks for listening to this episode. If you enjoyed listening, please leave us a five-star rating and review, which is one of the best ways you can support us. You can also join the discussion on our Reddit and Facebook pages, or even our Discord server and maybe play some games with us. Links can be found in the description below. Special thanks to Sirenscape for the background audio and Alex McPherson for providing the opening theme. I hope you can all join us next time as we continue on our adventure.